I'm John the Violin Man, I'm with you again for another edition of Down the Street Where You Live. And today I'm with an old friend of mine who's Gail Lawson, who actually lives in North London, but he's one of our regular internet listeners. He's in the same business with me, in the business of repairing musical instruments. Gail does actually specialise in trombones in the brass band section of the orchestra, of course, while I do violin. So, Gail, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself from there on. Well, uh, as you say, I'm uh, Gail Lawson. I'm originally from Yorkshire, and I came to London when I was 20 years old and joined the band of Her Majesty's Coldstream Guards as a viola player and I stayed in the band for some 27 years. Uh, during that time, I must confess, I travelled the world so many times and been round the world on aeroplanes, I can't remember how many times I actually flew. We did concert tours of Hong Kong, Australia, America, Japan, Europe and over a 27 year period uh, I had in fact a very privileged life. As a viola player, we had in the band a, a salon orchestra, a bit on the palm court style. And eventually, after all that time, I ended up being the uh, leader. I arranged music for the group, and we could go from string quartet to 17 players by adding trumpet, clarinet, trombone one at once so that we could actually play for all sorts of functions of course uh, the viola is the in the string section in the violin family and it's actually a fifth lower than the violin and not many people really know what a viola is but it's actually in between the violin and the cello the, the string quartet once played at number 10 Downing Street for a, a gathering of all the ex-prime ministers that were still alive and we would have 17 of us playing at Buckingham Palace for the investitures that Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Charles would officiate uh, giving, uh, giving away the uh, OBEs and things in the New Year's Honours List. On the military band side of my experiences, we perhaps one of the milestones in my life was we did a um, three months tour of America. We travelled from coast to coast, played in all the major cities, and we actually probably saw more of America than most Americans. In, in 27 years, we did that three times. And on the last occasion in 1991, I was really privileged to be able to be the advanced promo. Uh, I was the guy, along with a, a Scottish piper, we were two or three weeks ahead of the tour, uh, being interviewed on radio, television, newspaper magazines, newspapers, appearing in theatres, uh, at the Epcot Centre in Florida and all, all over the place. We, we were high profile, visible people in our rather splendid uniforms, I might say, uh, appearing on uh, breakfast television and things like that to promote the tour. Uh, it was an incredibly successful tour and we, it was a journey of a lifetime for me. In fact, the whole tour was organised by Columbia artists from New York and uh, as advanced promo guys, we, we were treated just as if we were somebody from Frank Sinatra's advanced promo team. It was absolutely an amazing experience. Uh, I can recall one of the Perhaps one of the highlights, we were in uh, Palm Springs, and Palm Springs is very near to a place called Palm Desert. Uh, the, in, in Palm Springs, there's a, a, a theatre called the Bob Hope Cultural Centre. Uh, the, the, the managing director was a lady called Delenzik. Uh, she, she actually invited us out, my friend and I, for, for dinner one Saturday evening in Palm Springs, and we, we, we got our our instructions how to get to the to the to the uh, restaurant. And she said, uh, "Drive down, you know, 757th Street West for two miles, and you'll come to a, a restaurant called Chaplin's. Go in there. We'll see you there about uh, seven o'clock." So we did exactly as we were told. We arrived at this place. Two young lads in uniform jumped out, valley parked the car, and in we went. Inside the doorway, there's a very distinguished-looking gentleman with long silvery hair at a, at a pedestal, checking people in. And I said, "Oh, good evening. Uh, we, we, we're, we've been invited by Nancy Delenzik." Uh, and uh, 
I said, I inquired is it whether she'd arrived or not, and this gentleman said, Ah, well, if Nancy de Lenzik has invited you, I don't think we can let you in. <laughs> and I said, Pardon? He said, You're English, aren't you? I said, Yes. He said, ah, that, that was a joke. I said, OK. <laughs> so he said, let's go for a drink. So this gentleman took us off for a drink and we sat at the bar. He said, they've not arrived. And he, he was a very pleasant chap and uh, obviously delighted to meet uh, a couple of people across from the pond. Anyway, eventually uh, it, it ended up, there were eight of us sat round a table and I was sat next to this great old gent oldish gentleman. And uh, so the scene is set. We've got eight people all, all uh, happy to talk to each other in, around a table. And in the corner is a chap playing a, um, a grand piano, a bit on the style of uh, Dave Brubeck, quite modern, modern jazz, you know, but on his own, just sat there playing away to, to, to people dining. Anyway, it turned, out, it turned out that this great old gentleman was the eldest son of Charlie Chaplin. Sydney, and I was absolutely amazed. And because we we actually we actually sat there for four hours eating cordon bleu food. It must have cost a fortune. Uh, Nancy Delenzik paid for it all, or perhaps the, uh, the the Bob Hope Cultural Centre paid for it. I don't know. But when I first joined the band back in London in 1967, I used to be able to go to the Savoy Hotel and uh, do casual work. I used to get there after we'd finished band practice about one o'clock in the afternoon and stay till about six and we would sweep corridors and change beds around and do any sort of uh, go for work just to earn a, a, a few extra shillings as it was in those days because I was only earning about ten pounds a week in the band and uh, the, the, the extra eighteen and nine pence for an afternoon's work and, and, uh, and a meal at the end of it was well worth it. Uh, one day uh, I was taken up into the uh, Savoy Hotel where, where there was a, a Charlie Chaplin suite uh, and, and apparently there were rooms that were permanently rented as it were to the, to the Charlie Chaplin family and any member of the family could, could stay there. So anyway, uh, as I was sat next to Charlie Chaplin's son, I said to him, does the Chaplin family still have a suite of rooms at the Savoy Hotel in London? And he was absolutely amazed that I even knew there was that. He said, that's not on general release to the public. Uh, how, do you, how do you know? I said, well, I've actually been in there, into the rooms. And, and I told him the story that I was asked one day to go in and I think it was to change a, a single bed into a double bed or something and carry it about. But fancy that, 20 years later or so, uh, meeting up from, from being a, a general dog's body uh, at the Savoy Hotel for 18 and 9 pence for an afternoon's work to actually meeting up with Charlie Chaplin's son and having dinner in his restaurant, it turned out to be, for about four hours. Somewhere towards the end of the meal, uh, Nancy Delenzik was sat opposite and she, and she shouted to somebody behind me, Hey Bob, come over and see, meet my English friends before you go, because they were about to leave. So I stood up and turned around and, and I found myself shaking hands with Robert Wagner and his new wife, as it was then. And I thought, what am I doing here? How come this young lad from Yorkshire has ended up doing this? Uh, it was just a, a truly magnificent and very remarkable evening for me. Uh, and um, after we finished, I went over to the chap playing, playing the piano, and I said to him, uh, I, "I'd like you to know that I'm I, I'm a musician and I, I've enjoyed your playing uh, this evening." Uh, I said, uh, "Your name wouldn't be Dave Brubeck by any chance, would it?" And he says, no, and if you don't believe me, I'll show you my bank balance. <laughs> uh, which, is a, 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 which was just a brilliant end to a, a brilliant evening. That, that was just one night from a three-month tour, uh, coast to coast in America. There are a, a, a million other stories that I could tell you about. Uh, we were wined and dined almost every night. Um, it was just uh, a brilliant occasion on 
Uh, I can't remember the city it was, but we, we were, uh, uh, when, we, when we arrived at reception, they said, who's, who's your boss? Uh, or who do you work for? And I said, well, I'm actually a member of the armed forces, and in reality, the uh, Majesty of the Queen is my uh, boss, ultimate boss. And uh, I found myself uh, uh, being given the keys to the presidential suite. And apparently in this hotel, uh, during presidential campaigns, the, the, the whole entourage of the president's campaign would take over and pay for all the rooms in all the ho this hotel and take it over, with, you know, with all the uh, press and media and, and, and everybody else. And I, and I found myself on the top floor in the president's suite on my, on my own. My friend, uh, uh, the, the chap from the Queen's Own Highlanders, he was in another room. But the, this, it had, the, this, this suite of rooms had two kitchens, two living rooms, oil paintings on every wall. There was a big, biggest basket of fresh fruit I'd ever seen in my life on the table which was well uh, nibbled away by the following morning, I can assure you. And uh, I, I felt like somebody really important, not that I was, but it was just like John said earlier, how the other half live. It's amazing. It is to totally amazing. It's a, And now you've come back to North London to repair musical instruments. Yeah. I, for some time, and that's how I met you, of course. Yeah, I, after I left the band, I, I uh, found it very difficult to... Uh, to actually uh, adjust to civilian life. Uh, I, I did get a job working for a, a posh hotel firm. I decided to go on a course for repairing musical instruments. Uh, it just seemed like a good idea at the time and, and it turned out to be a brilliant idea. Um, so it, it, in a nutshell, I, I, I did a two year course with a third year option, did the three years uh, from uh, out of all the people who started, probably about 15 of us started. There were two of us finished the third year. I was the oldest person on the course, and the other person who finished was the, uh, the youngest, and she was like 16 when we first started on the course, and about 19 by the time we finished, I suppose. And uh, we were the only two who actually finished and passed the third year course. Much to the annoyance of some of the younger lads on the course, we... We, we hit it off and, and were great friends because I could, I could actually be shown how to do something and do it and she could remember all the, all the melting, all the temperatures and the melting points of solder and, and all the technical information that we needed to where I used to. So we, we did the course together and uh, we, 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 uh, she went off and got a job with a music shop and, and, and she is now, some 15 years later, the, the highest paid member of that organisation uh, on, on the staff uh, as a repairer. And, and I, I went off to uh, work for my own uh, workshop uh, at home, which incidentally I built as a, as a part-time project whilst I was in the band to uh, actually restore Morris Miners in. Uh, uh, so it, that that after I've done a couple of Morris Miners, uh, I, I, I realised that rolling around on the floor upside down, getting rust in my eyes, welding up parts, um, was for someone younger, and, and I'd achieved my ambition anyway. So uh, the the workshop lent itself very nicely to to, to becoming a musical instrument workshop. Well, perhaps Gail, this is a story for another time. This has been absolutely wonderful. And uh, what about a choice of music? Have you got something you'd like to hear now? Something we could play for you? Well, I don't know if you've got anything of this nature, but my all-time favourite uh, LP, as it used to be called, a vinyl LP, is a, a P, uh, is a, an LP called Tutti Strombones. Uh, the arrangements on on, on this uh, record are, are, have never been surpassed, in my opinion. And anything from that would be superb. So that's Tutti's Trombones, and I'm sure we'll be able to find it for you. We've got an unbelievable collection of music okay. in Radio Terracoid and Gail Lawson. It's been an absolutely fascinating interview, and thank you. Your station, your information, your Radio Terracoid.